Okay, I have started the video. Recording. Science. The word comes from a Latin verb meaning. Say 1.14. The word scientist has only existed in English since the 19th century. But people from every corner of the globe have been figuring stuff out by observing the physical world for a long time. For example, records of medicine and natural history date back hundreds and even thousands of years in ancient India, Greece, and China. Centuries ago, Maya astronomers precisely tracked the movements of the sun, moon, and planets leaving behind calendars still used by their descendants today, and indigenous cultures worldwide have developed rich understandings of the natural world through close observation. Like, for example, indigenous Alaskans have had a front row seat to climate change, observing thinning sea ice and declining salmon populations. And aboriginal people in Australia told stories of firehawks, birds that intentionally spread fires by airdropping flaming sticks into brush to scare out prey long before professional scientists described the behavior in 2017. As a process of discovery and knowing, science has been formalized with the scientific method. Maybe you've heard these six simple steps before. First, so the method goes. Okay, you know, the first thing I want you to put down. And I want you to put it down in the middle of your notebook, on your line. So if you're starting your line right here, you're gonna put scientific method right in here. Okay? And then underneath that, you're going to write six steps, because there's six steps. You need to know that there's six steps. That's the answer to the first question on the bell ringer today, with six steps. Oh, I got it right. Yeah, there you go. See, y'all do. All right, so write that in there, scientific method. And then you're going to write six steps. All in the same way? No. You're going to write scientific method, and then right underneath it, you'll write six steps. So you'll have, I'm just going to abbreviate up here. You'll have scientific method. This is my notebook. This is in the middle. Then underneath here, I'll write six steps. And then I will number. And don't put your number over in your margin, because you need to know that these numbers just go with this. So I put a number one there and be ready to write. The first one, in the first step is on the board. It says, the first thing we do in a scientific um, method is we make an observation. So we're making an observation, an observation that leads us, you need to write this down, step one. Make an observation, underline observation. That is your key word. Underline observation, that is your key word. Make an observation that leads you to ask a question. Step number one. So, when we make an observation, you need to write this down, we use our five senses. This needs to be in there. It's not on the video, but I add stuff. This is just my guideline up here. So you need to put under observation, under the first step, observation, you need to put five senses. We use our five senses to make an observation with. We watch or look at things. We listen. We smell. Sometimes we'll taste. Sometimes we'll feel. Now will we do all five of them every time? No. But that's how that's what you make in any part of the world. You go, or any subject you're in, if they're saying, I want you to make an observation, those, what, that's how you're going to do it, with one of those, or all of those, or two of those of your senses, okay? That's not just in science, that's everywhere, okay? Five senses. Does everybody know what their five senses is without having to list them? Yes or no? Uh, if yeah. you don't, you need, to, you need to write them down. But you should know what your five senses are. 
Has uh, everybody got that? Is everybody up to date on that? Are you ready? Remember, you're only supposed to use a pencil in my classroom. Question. Like, I noticed how my hard-boiled egg seems to retain water. I wonder what happens if I put it in the microwave. The next comes the hypothesis. A testable explanation or reasonable prediction of what will happen. Like, all right, so step two is writing your, hypo your hypothesis. Here we go. There it is. You're going to make a hypothesis. It needs to be a testable. It needs to be testable. Testable means that you can test it and get data from doing that test. Okay? So it needs to be testable. And it is a reasonable prediction of what will happen, of what you will, what you think will happen. So we make a hypothesis. A hypothesis must be testable, and it is a reasonable prediction of what you think will happen. So I can write a hypothesis. <coughs> So I could make up a hypothesis, say I wanted to change the color of my Coca-Cola. So I could say, when I add yellow to my Coke, it will turn purple. That would be my hypothesis. So it's an hypothesis is an if-then statement. You need to write that under what you just wrote. Hypothesis is an if-then statement. If I do this, then that's gonna happen. If-then statement. Y'all should have studied if-then statements in English. So it's an if-then or if-then statement. A hypothesis is an if-then statement. So. Now the words if and then doesn't have to be in your hypothesis, but it can. But it still has the same form. When I add yellow, so I can change if I add yellow, right? It's just saying when I add. If I add yellow food color to my coat, then it will turn purple. You see? But I, but, and, and what I said while well, ago was still an if-then statement, even though I didn't have the word if or then in it. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. Everybody got this down? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to learn more about this if-then statement and the hypothesis as we go along because we'll talk about where the independent and dependent variable is. We won't do that until we get into talking about them because then you'll just be all confused if I start right there. Okay, so a hypothesis is a testable, reasonable prediction of what you think will happen. And it's an if-then statement. Everybody has that down. Everybody has this down, and that it's an if-then statement. Yes, yes. What was the first thing you were supposed to write down? Step two, make a hypothesis. It must be testable. And it is a reasonable explanation And guys, I paraphrase a lot. So, you know, if I say put this down, this is what you need to put down. And sometimes I'll have you underline words. Like, I really think we should underline the word testable. So everybody go in there and underline that word testable. And underline, underline the line prediction. So the key words up there is hypothesis, testable, testable, ugh, and prediction. When you're remembering stuff, if you can remember those key words, even if you can't remember every single word of the alphabet or the definition of what you wrote down, those key words will get you the right answer on a test. If you can remember those key words. And you'll get where you figure out what the key words are so you know what to underline without me having to say underline. All right, so everybody got that? Everybody got their key words underlined? You got everything, honey? Okay.
acceptable explanation or reasonable prediction of what will happen. Like, I hypothesize that the water will boil inside the egg, build up pressure, and the egg will explode. Next, you test the hypothesis with an experiment that can be repeated. All right, step three. We're going to test the hypothesis. And we do that by an experiment. So if I'm going to test my hypothesis over adding whether, if I add yellow food coloring to my coat, it'll make it purple, then I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have some coat, right, in the glass, and I'm gonna have some yellow food coloring, and I'm gonna put that in there, and then stir it up, right, and then see what happens. Now, more than likely, it's not gonna turn purple, right? But, so, but I tested it to see if it would or not. So you have to test your hypothesis, and you do that with doing an experiment. And you always want to do your, your experiment, you have to repeat it. In other words, you want to do it more times. You, you should always do it at least three times. Now, can anybody tell me why you should do that experiment at least three times? Because two out of three times it will be good or it will be bad. Okay, so in other words, how could we rephrase that, somebody else? There can be a lot of different outcomes. Because there can be a lot of different outcomes. And if you have a lot of different outcomes, your explanation was good too. Is your data reliable? No. Now, if it, every time you test it, you get the same data. If I put yellow in my coat three times, and all three times it doesn't turn purple, then that's definitely more than, you know, that my hypothesis is not correct, right? But if I put yellow in there one time and it turns purple out of three times, then my data is not accurate, right? Because one out of three times it turned purple. So you want to always retest your experiment or redo your experiment at least three times to make sure that your data is accurate and correct, okay? So in here, you need to underline test, experiment, and repeat it. Those are your key words in there. We're gonna test the hypothesis with an experiment and we need to be able to repeat that experiment. Everybody got that? Do I have any, I still have people writing. I try to watch that. Remember when taking notes, we don't look up there and get one word at a time. We get two or three at a time, write them down and then look back up. Unless we don't know how to spell a word, but most of those words up there, we should be able to spell in theory. Everything in science is pretty much in theory. Now, there's some things that have been proven, and we'll talk about that. I think we talked about that in the eighth grade. The difference between a theory and a, and a true statement or a true finding. We ready? You analyze the results. You All right, number four. Step four is we're going to analyze the results. Step four, we're going to analyze the results. Now, analyze simply means that you're going to collect the data. So underneath analyze your results, just put collect data. This is where we collect our data. This is where we chart our data. Sometimes you'll chart your data. And I don't think we do a lot of charting with data this year, but next year you'll have several different experiments that you do that you'll have to, it's like, we don't get it done in one day. And you have to observe and chart and measure and stuff like that and do that for about a month or so. And then we end the experiment and then you have to go in and take all your data and put it into a graph. All right, so, Analyze the results. This is where we decide if our hypothesis is true or false, if it worked or if it didn't. Put that down. This is where you find out if your hypothesis was true or false. So just put true or false, right or wrong, however you want to put it. 
left to right, no, don't put left to right, put true or false or right or wrong. That's what we do in the app. We're taking our data, we're looking at it, we're charting it, and from our data, then we can say, yes, our hypothesis was right, or no, it was not. Okay? And then we have step five. Step five is when you, you when you write your conclusion or you or you report the conclusion. So in your conclusion, or you can just put conclusion at step five if you want to. In your conclusion, you're going to take the information you got from your data and you're going to write down what it was. So on my hypothesis, if I add yellow. When adding yellow food dye to my coke, it'll turn purple. Um, we did the test three times and it never turned purple. So our hypothesis was not correct. So when you start writing a conclusion, in the first part, you're going to write what your hypothesis is. And then if it's correct, you're going to put that it was correct and you'll back up that it was correct with the data that you collected. Okay? If it's not correct, then you'll state, my hypothesis was not correct, okay? Um, I was wrong. And then you can go from there to the next step that we're fixing to find out what it is. But that's all your conclusion is. Your conclusion is writing the results that you found from your experiment after, your, after you analyzed your data, okay? That's all a conclusion is. And in conclusion, this is what I found out. Alright, any questions on that? You report the conclusions. And finally, you use the conclusions to make new hypotheses. Alright, so the sixth step is you take that conclusion that you just wrote and you can make a new hypothesis. Now, do you always have to make a new hypothesis? No. I mean, you can just stop there and say, okay, that didn't work. Move on to something else you're interested in if you want to try to see if it'll work. Okay? Uh, but if you do, so that's what you do in step six. You decide, am I going to leave it like it is and not do any more testing, or, if, or am I going to do more testing? And if I'm going to do more testing, then I have to write a new hypothesis, right? So, like, I decided I want to do more testing on my coat turning purple or changing colors. So, I could write the hypothesis and says, if, uh, when I add bleach to my coat, it will turn colors, or it will turn white, or you see what I'm saying? And then I can test that, because I, my independent variable there is what I changed. So first I used yellow food coloring, then I used bleach. And my data, my, independent, my dependent variable is what I collect my data on, and my data is either you know, it turns purple, black, blue, whatever. And then you can say yes or no. Does that make sense? But you don't have to write a new hypothesis at that point. You can just say, well, who cares if my coat changes colors? What's something else I'm curious, curious you know, that I'm interested in that I could see if this would work or that would work? And, and I know you can, especially boys are really good at this. You probably go out. How many of you tore something apart to see how it works? Are you able to put it back together? No. No. Nope. Nope. Sometimes not. But sometimes you can, right? Well, you know, that's that's being that's observing. That's being, you know, you're looking to see. You want to see what makes it work. You know? Uh, sometimes you take things apart to see how it works and, and, and maybe you think you can make it work better. You know, so you could say, well, if I did this. If I go in and add blah, blah, blah to my lawnmower, my riding lawnmower, then it will be a racing lawnmower. But, and I do build racing lawnmowers in case y'all don't know. But you see what I'm saying? So a lot of, a lot of science, pretty much all of science, is people that ask questions. Why does something happen this way? Why, when I do this, does that happen? And, it's, and those are all comes to a conclusion of whether that's going to work or not using the scientific method, okay? So the scientific method is we observe, or we, and when you're observing, more than likely if you're thinking something will do something, 
if you do this to it, then you, you've, you've seen something similar or something that's made your mind go to that position. That's what it means about observing. So we observe, right? And then what? What's step two? We write our hypothesis, and it must be testable, and it must be what else, Mr. Miller? Without looking at your notes. Starts with the R. Repeatable. You gotta be able to test it more than once. So that's step two. Then step three, we do our experiment, right? Yeah? Step four, we do the analysis, which means we collect our data. Step five is our conclusion. That's where we take our data and decide if our hypothesis is right or wrong and why, right? And then in step six, that is where we decide, well, I'm done with that, or, you know, if that didn't work, maybe this would work. And so you'd write a new hypothesis and do another test. Okay, we're gonna stop there today because I don't want you to get too, that's, this is where we stop, third hour. I don't want us to get too far ahead of, our, of my first hour of class because I have yet to get them caught up. But they have yet to have a whole hour of me lecturing or class period. We always seem to get interrupted or, all right, so we'll stop there for today. Uh, well, maybe it recorded it all. Yeah, it's still recording. I have a low battery. Okay.